Welcome back everyone. In this video, we're gonna go through some Microsoft 365 questions that you might be asked if you were landing a job in something like a system engineer role or an end user computing role. Some of these questions might just come up if you're looking for a Microsoft 365 role. Basically any type of IT role, such as engineering or support or maybe even architect, you'll probably come across some 365 requirements. So this video is going to break down some of the very common questions you will hear in a Microsoft 365 interview or one of those roles such as a system engineer or a desktop support analyst or something like that. Before we get started, if you're interested in all things tech, all things Microsoft Azure, Microsoft 365, all things cloud and maybe just a bit of tech fun, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. I'm trying to release lots of videos now about what I've seen in the IT industry and just general tech sort of fun. So before we get into the video, please take three seconds to hit that like button. Maybe subscribe if you're interested in seeing more videos. Let's go. As Microsoft 365 makes its way more and more into people's technology stacks and organizations where they've maybe been using on-premises exchange servers, or they might have been using G Suite or maybe some free mail provider in the past, you'll notice that a lot more of these companies are looking for engineers or support personnel that have that experience in Microsoft 365. The knowledge requirements around Microsoft 365 can be very vast. It can be a quite a massive tech stack to learn. And if you're inside the environments day in, day out, you really need to know what is going on and what services and applications are being used within their Microsoft 365 subscription and tenant so that you know how to support them and you know how to answer questions from the users and from other organizations that you may be interacting with. So in order for organizations to give their users and their staff the best experience, they'll be looking for people that have those Microsoft 365 skills to support their environment and to better understand the, the way that they can be used. So to help you understand better the questions that may come up in a Microsoft 365 interview or in a interview for a system engineer role or something like that, Let's go through some of the questions that I've asked candidates and that I've been asked as a candidate. Number one, what is Microsoft 365? This is a very simple question, but with many different types of answers. The interviewer will give this question as it's quite broad and it lets you answer in many different ways. The way I suggest answering is maybe describing what sort of applications and services are available in Microsoft 365. Maybe give the interviewer a bit of a breakdown of what you have done in 365 and maybe go back to the roots and maybe refer to it being a SaaS service. The question is quite broad and it's really just trying to get you to talk about Microsoft 365 and maybe drop some of those keywords like SharePoint Online, OneDrive for Business, Exchange Online, maybe refer back to your experience in the field and where you've used an on-prem version of that technology. So maybe if you've used Exchange on-premises, you'll talk about how Microsoft 365 replaces that service using Exchange Online. Can you name some products within Microsoft 365? So this is a very simple question. What the interviewer is looking for is looking to see if you have true experience in Microsoft 365. So you should come out and say things like Exchange Online, OneDrive for Business, SharePoint Online. I would also go as far as giving some examples of what they can do. So for example, you might say uh, Exchange Online is a service in Microsoft 365 and it's used for exchanging mail and it replaces on-premises exchange technology. Can you name and describe some Microsoft 365 licenses? So Microsoft 365 licensing can be very tricky. The interviewer at this point is probably not looking for you to give exact answers because usually licensing is driven by a partner or by a licensing specialist. So what they are looking for is maybe something more like around the lines of where you can acquire Azure AD P1 licensing, as in from where inside the portal and what sort of services that will give you. So I would maybe give an example saying to use Azure Active Directory conditional access, you will need Active Directory P1 licensing. Those are the sort of examples they'll be looking for. So maybe just pre prepare before your interview, have a look at some licenses and see what's available and see what special features a certain license will give you. So another example will be EMS, Enterprise Mobility and Security. You can give an example saying that that can be an extra add-on or it can be included in your M365 licensing. 
I think that's a good example because that one is one that people get really hung up on. Maybe you can uh, do a bit of research before your interview and have a look and see what you can understand from EMS licensing. How do you get to the admin portal for Microsoft 365? So for someone who's worked in this day and day, they can straight off the top of their head go, oh, I need to go to admin.microsoft.com. But for someone who might be in an interview and still be at that maybe entry level of Microsoft 365, that's what the interviewer is trying to, to get from you. So where is, your, where is your experience and how much experience do you have in there? Do you know where to go to create a new user in Microsoft 365, for example? So this, this one you might not get straight away, but at least if you can uh, show the interviewer that you understand that there is an admin portal and that that's where you would administer users and groups, etc. That would be a good enough answer. No interviewer is going to deduct points from you for not knowing the URL off the top of your head. What is Azure Active Directory? This is a very common question. I think uh, a lot of people still maybe don't understand what Azure Active Directory is at that entry level. A lot of interviewees will have experience in on-premises Active Directory. And if you haven't got much experience in 365, you might think that Azure Active Directory is literally just a copy inside Microsoft 365. That is true in some sense, but it's, it's more of a one-way sync from your on-premises environment to Microsoft 365. And it's, it's more of a flat uh, architecture. So it's important to understand uh, what, what the difference is between on-premises Active Directory and Azure Active Directory. So maybe do a bit of research and, and give yourself a bit of a better understanding. I would recommend definitely bringing up Azure Active Directory Connect and let the employer know how you actually understand what AAD Connect does. So it actually syncs your objects that you specify or all the objects in your on-premises Active Directory to Azure Active Directory. Maybe just make note of some of the type of objects that it does sync and it doesn't sync as well. What is the highest level of permission in Azure AD? So this question is about the permissions and the identity access management in Azure AD. There is a lot of roles available in Azure AD, including privileged roles, but maybe to better understand where your experience is, the interviewer might ask you what the highest level of permission is to see if you understand or you had experience with the structure inside Azure Active Directory roles. The answer to this one would be obviously global administrator. I think that if you gave that answer, you would probably do well with that question, but maybe you could also elaborate on all the different types of roles, such as application administrator, user administrator, help desk administrator, maybe just give a bit of a breakdown of those roles to give a better understanding to the interviewer of your experience in Microsoft 365. What is the difference between a user and a guest? This is a very common question and I would be asking this one as well because I feel like a lot of people still don't understand what the difference between a user and a guest is in Microsoft 365. So a user is obviously someone who belongs in the directory, so they're part of the organization and so generally they will have a license in your tenant and they will be an employee or they will be a contractor or something like that. A guest is someone you may have invited. So let's say I wanted to share a document from my OneDrive with someone in a different organization. When I invite that person, then that person will be added to our Active Directory, our Azure Active Directory as a guest user. So it's important to understand that difference so that you can also understand the different types of permissions applied to a user and a guest and what they can and can't do as a guest. What is litigation hold? This will slip up many people. Uh, litigation hold is something that all organizations want, but they don't quite know what it's called. Litigation hold makes sure that organizations always have a copy of the data that their users create or modify within their environment. So for example, if there is litigation hold applied to a Teams channel and someone deletes that channel, by default, that channel is then deleted or removed from the directory in, I think, 30 days might be 92 days depending on your licensing. If I apply a litigation hold to every Teams channel, for example, I might apply that litigation hold for one year or forever. And that means that users can no longer delete things within that tenant or within that Teams channel or basically anything that is 
against that litigation policy. You can do them against Teams, Exchange, SharePoint, OneDrive. This is a very common question. You'll probably only get asked it when you're dealing with a bigger organization or with a managed services provider, but it's important to understand at least what litigation hold is. So do your research and better understand that question before you, you enter your interview. How can I review something that a user has done inside the directory? So for example, how can I see what a user has done inside a SharePoint site? I wanna know who deleted something from a document library. I want to know who deleted a mail item from a mailbox. The very simple answer is in the unified audit logs. I think it's important to also understand why someone would want to go in and look at those logs. So it's good if maybe you, you understand what that unified auditing log section has in it. So if you have um, access to look at one, have a look and understand what type of logs you can view in there. Um, for people that have never looked in there, you might be very interested in what sort of activity gets logged in Microsoft 365 as well. That's all for today. I hope that helps you prepare for your Microsoft 365 interview or for your interview as an engineer with some Microsoft 365 background or experience. Let me know how you go in your job interview. Let me know if that helps. And if you like the video, please hit that like button, maybe subscribe. I'm trying to release these types of videos more often. Let me know what you think. And if you have any further questions or want to talk about any other type of roles or interview questions that you might have in those roles, let me know.